Welcome to Inspirational Journeys, everyone. Before I introduce my returning guest, I would like to remind you to subscribe to the YouTube channel, like the video, and tap the notification bell so that you don't miss a video. And if you're listening on the podcast, do subscribe to the podcast, share it with your friends, and leave a rating or review because it does help people find it the show. So today, Claire O'Sullivan, who has been on the show before, returns to talk about her new book, Romance Under Wraps. Welcome back, Claire. Hi, nice to see you again. Nice to talk to you again, too. So just for for new listeners, and since it's been a while, uh, introduce yourself again for us. Well, I'm a retired nurse practitioner. And my husband and I have been married for 16 years. We live in Southern Oregon, very, very um, rural area. And we have three kids and four grandkids. And I do a lot of gardening these days and also a lot of reading, of course. I love to read and write and edit. Editing is not so much fun. But that's about it for me. I'm not really, you know, super exciting. Uh, you know, I just have, um, I, I, I used to have a kit where I'd go around and brush for fingerprints at like midnight. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and then I'd forget to clean it up and my husband would get it up in the morning, <laughs> excuse me, <clears throat> and wonder what happened. <laughs> mm. Wow, that sounds interesting. But I get it. I bet it was part of your research, though, for your books, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So, speaking of books, I'm not going to ask you what inspired you to become a writer because we've already talked about that. I'm going to link to the podcast episode and the YouTube video on each platform so that you guys can go back and listen or watch, you know, the previous interview. So, what inspired you to write this book? Well, a lot of things. Actually, I started, excuse me, I'm going to mute for it just a second so I can cough here. I don't okay. have COVID. Well, while she's doing that, the book is entitled Romance Under Wraps. And if you haven't read it, as I encouraged you last week, do go out and get this book. It is a page turner. It reads like a thriller. The links will definitely be in the show notes. So... I'm back. Okay. So uh, let's see. A lot of things inspired it. I I first had um, just things that I I wanted to get through personally, some personal experiences, but I also wanted to be able to uh, share the gospel, for one. But I didn't want to preach to the choir, and I learned from a really great agent, um, Steve Lobby, who uh, works for well, he owns Steve Lobby Agency. Don't preach to the choir if you're wanting to share the gospel. So I didn't, and um, I went on and I kind of looked at things such as what motivates a human being to one read about a thief, and why would they even relate? And I believe it's because everybody has the same kind of experiences. Uh, are we faking it through life? Who are we really? What are we doing here? Why are we getting in this relationship? Is it going to work? Those kinds of things, um, you know, trust issues. And we all have those kind of issues that we deal with. And a lot of us backslide. And that would be me. I've backslidden uh, a good deal. I've had that experience. Yay. And, <laughs> and I, I think everybody has as well. And then there is a, a gospel message in there for, you know, people. It's just not long. It's just to the point. And it's, so it is faith-based. Um, the <clears throat> um, So that's basically what I was, you know, why I was motivated to uh, write this. Yeah, and um, the thriller element of it. I've read romantic suspense before. I've read pa fast-paced books, but this is, this was different from my normal. What inspired you to write it like a thriller i don't really know i used to love to real uh, read thrillers i mean i read tons of them and i also read of course romantic suspense this time around i added a few more 
bullets and a few more explosions and things like that, uh, which was a lot of fun for me. And uh, tried to keep the pace going quickly. So. And that's what keeps people turning pages. Um, so did you, you self-publish this book, right? Or did you have a... Me? Did I'm you sorry? self pub did you self publish it or did you no. have a traditional publisher? Traditional publishing through Elf Lake Publishing. Deb Haggerty, she's absolutely fantastic. Oh, okay. Did you have to have an did you work with an agent or was this one that you were able to get on your own? Mm -hmm. I did both. I I went through agents and I went through uh, publishing houses that accepted Christian romantic suspense on its own. And of course, went through the million rejections and whatnot. And Deb finally took a chance on me, which was awesome. And I was really grateful for that. But she is accepting uh, unsolicited manuscripts. Oh, okay. So is this your first novel? I know I've, I saw in your bio, because I, I was going to say it was your debut, but I don't want to miss, you know, misconstrue that or anything or get that wrong is this your first one or have you written others well this is my first one and i'm in the process of writing a thriller thriller which oh. is a military uh plot-based thriller more than it is a character driven um romantic suspense there is romance in there but it is a downright military thriller oh wow so, which it, it includes a whole lot of research since I wasn't in the military. <laughs> oh, yeah, but it does. So um, tell me a little bit about these two, these two characters, the, the, the girl, I can't remember the names of it because it's, you know, it's been a few days since I've read it. But anyway, your, your protagonist, she has a lot of uh, what PTSD or anxiety because of her, the abusive relationship she was in. What inspired well, she, her? Uh, she has uh, uh, post-traumatic stress uh, distress syndrome, as well as post-traumatic amnesia, which is retrograde, which means she's able to remember only what she remembers when she woke up from the ICU beyond. So she's without any identity. She has none. So since she was with a thief, he just retrained her. And all she does is run from him because he was an abusive guy. And then she steals identities so that she can go town to town doing different things and making sure he doesn't find her and making sure that she can uh, work and right. survive. Mm -hmm. Catherine Kate, that's her name. Yes. <laughs> and then you had the love interest, the police detective. What? Mm -hmm. I don't want to spoil too much. I really don't. But what inspired you to, to get to, to make him want to save her instead of arrest her? He he turns out to be um, kind of Christ-like figure, a symbol of Christ's love for us, unconditional love, and want to save. And uh, even Deb and a few other people said, gee, that's just like what Jesus did and wanting to save us and, and doing everything he could. Um, he's not without his own wounds and, and worries and anxieties. And, you know, he's a human being, but um, definitely I wanted, I wanted her to see that she was loved despite the fact that she had a horrible pe uh, background. Wow. Okay. See, this is why I tell you guys, you got to read this book. I don't want to spoil it because I would give away too much because <laughs> there's a question at the end I want to know, but I don't, but if I give it away, <laughs> but if I ask you that question, I will give away the ending, <laughs> part of the ending. <laughs> no, nope, can't do that. Um, so other than the, the, the military thriller, um, do you have any, any other books come you know in the works i sure do i have a sequel to um romance under wraps it's called glass slipper mm -hmm. and it it's based around a different uh character around the medical examiner and his and it's rather comedic because 
he's very noir, very 1940s noir. So it's an over the top comedy where he has to deal with two things one a serial killer and two a new lab technician and she's driving him insane and he really hates her and wants to kill her <laughs> wow oh boy <laughs> so i have to go from a, um, a male point of view so i'm asking my husband all the time do guys think this and he's like no or do guys ever say this and he's like not even <laughs> yeah, you gotta have to ask they think, questions. They think sports, you know, they're thinking sports and whatnot, and and he's a uh, very morose and and uh, you know a boozer and a womanizer, and he's he's having to change his his evil ways and having a really hard time of it around his new love interest or I mean hate interest I should say <laughs> <laughs> that love hate relationship oops <laughs> yeah and, and then I, ha I do have a couple other books um in the works one is called Alex and the Very Dead Doxy and that's just a uh, uh, work in progress title Doxy a lot of people don't know what that is it it, it means you know basically a street walking gal you know red uh -huh. light district and Alex is actually in Alexandria, and she's a very, uh, so I'm working on a military thriller and a cozy at the same time. She's, oh. a, she's a very inexperienced cop. Now, the military thriller has to do with um, Scott Walker. He is special forces and also has to do with Cheyenne Keys, and she's a scientist for um, the study of all things bugs and microbes mm. and it, it's kind of a fun it's been a story that's been actually in the works since 2014 and a lot of research went into that one i like so. how you did one character in first and the other in third that was definitely different and you and i liked how you did not didn't have to go back you kept the story moving between povs yeah, I think I think that was a big lesson that I'd learned. Uh, my editor, I just love her to pieces, Rebecca um, White. She has, she just slays me every time I make a mistake. She's like, "What?" Or I'm rolling my eyes now, or something. She's so funny. <laughs> but she's she's been an absolute um, godsend since 2012. She's helped me out. She's just, you know crossed everything out and said don't do this don't do that don't do this and she didn't really know she was an editor but she does absolutely everything from you know copy uh, copy edit to developmental to proofing she's just wonderful um so and she's freelance she's an awesome gal and it helps to have an editor in your corner oh absolutely um, yep so any advice for writers that you want to leave us Oh yeah, have an editor for one. <laughs> right. <laughs> and make sure they're good. You know, they're worth their weight in gold. Mm -hmm. uh, save up your money because they can be expensive. Uh, I think Reedsy has several. Um, and let's see what else. Uh, write, then rewrite, then rewrite, then rewrite, then rewrite, then rewrite. And, and then edit some more. Oh, yeah. yes, <laughs> rewriting until you're at the point where you're satisfied totally satisfied and if you have a critique group that is fantastic or um and what they call an alpha group mm -hmm. uh, i i used scribafeel and uh, they are you have to pay for it it's 65 dollars a year and then inked voices they're another good critique group uh you also have to use them and i did use software pro writing aid which i think is better than anything out there in fact the, my editor said that's the best program of course you need a human being uh, on top of that but you can get a lifetime subscription and it's very inexpensive but relatively speaking right grammarly is awful sorry grammarly guys but they actually made pro writing aid which is really funny I know they make that they, they and I have a friend who likes to use them both together. <laughs> I have tried that and um, Grammarly just com completely turns everything around. And my editor said, "What is this? Why did you do this?" 
why did why did you not follow your pro writing aid <laughs> so i gave up grammarly and i just uh, keep to pro writing aid and uh, my editor and if you need developmental um editing you start there um mine needed a lot of editing throughout the whole process and and she she was basically free for me for years not realizing she was an actual editor and she uh she actually got a freelance job uh with elk lake publishing they loved her okay yeah so she she works freelance and does a a number of um a number of uh, authors out there so both self self published or traditional Oh, okay. That is, that is so cool. So, yeah. um, and I was going to recommend, and I don't remember the name of the book, but Fern Michaels wrote a military, not necessarily, I don't think it was a thriller so much, but she wrote a military novel. So and who, who was that? Fern Michaels. Oh, Fern Michaels. Okay. Yeah. So so you might I will have to check that out. I've, yeah. I've got, I've got my TB, TBR, pile is so high it's unbelievable i think i've maxed out my kindle <laughs> no i've got kindle unlimited so i've got to i had to return yours so that i could get something somebody else's because <laughs> i got exactly so many books works, on my yeah. tbr it's not even funny i know it is so not funny well thank you so much for being back on the show it's been a pleasure to talk to you and we challenge you today oh before i do that now, if you don't feel comfortable, just let me know. But do you have a Bible verse you want to share? Oh, boy. Um, Genesis 1 to Revelation. Uh, I, I, I love the Old Testament. <laughs> Not <laughs> and, just one, right? The whole thing. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yes. I, well, I'm, I'm stuck in the Old Testament right now. And, uh, you know, learning more about Jewish history and how how God used the law to show them Christ. So it's really tough to do. And I would say all of Psalm 22 just kills me because it, it really, it explains in detail the, the death and resurrection of Christ. You know, mm. uh, what, 800 years before, 600 years before Jesus was born and, and 800 years before it was, um, uh, the cross was even invented right i love the psalms oh, yeah, i really do too. yeah psalm 121 was what one of our our deacon our deacons preached on on mm -hmm. sunday he said he believes mm -hmm. that we're living psalm 121 this year and psalm 122 next year so <laughs> yeah. there you go i believe I mean, it too yeah all right so would you like to close us out in prayer okay Oh, thank you, Jesus, so much for this time in fellowship and sharing. And Lord, I ask that everyone that listens is totally blessed and goes back to read Psalm 22 because it is just totally awesome. Lord, I thank you so much for the blessings that you've given us. And I thank you so much for this time today. In Jesus' holy and precious name, amen. Amen. So we challenge you today to go out there and read to get inspired, write something inspiring, and share your creation with the world. For when you've touched one life, you've touched thousands. Thanks for joining us on Inspirational Journeys, and have a blessed day, everyone.